Hello everybody. I haven't made a video for a while. I've been sending some of the videos I made around and around. But I've been waiting. I've been watching the Republicans and the Democrats. Well, the leader and the Democrats, right now, if she went to Egypt, she'd be arrested because she tried to undermine the current government in Egypt <clears throat> with the existing party that was there. And unfortunately, that does not go along with my policy. My policy would be it's the right of every government, every country to exist as they wish. It is only up to the people within that country to decide how they shall be governed and how they shall be ruled and how, what type of government they set up. And nobody else, not the United States, not the Soviet Union, not any other country in the world. The country that is that country has that right to exist and be as it wishes by the people within that country. And it's up to only the people to make the changes. Not somebody who's secretary of state of some other country or something like that. So yeah, so if we elect her, we've got a president who can't go to many countries in the world because she did some undermining. And then I look at the other Democrats and I say, yeah, that's the usual Democrat rhetoric right there. They all say the same thing, just use different words. Then I look into the Republicans. Oh, we got something different there. We got a bully. Donald Trump says, oh, I can be, I can be. But he has never, ever shown anything but a bully. He pushes, forces, or buys his way through everything. And it will go his way and his way alone. Biggest thing that scares me is he is now attacking the Constitution of the United States. He says the 14th Amendment is illegal. There's only one amendment in all the amendments <clears throat> that is illegal. <clears throat> the main body of the Constitution directly says no direct levied tax. That means no tax is paid directly by you, levied by the federal government. The income tax is just the opposite. But it puts, well, in case of national emergency. Heck, having a, one congressman with a sore foot might be considered a national emergency the way our Congress thinks. <clears throat> So, no. <clears throat> that is the only amendment in the Constitution. But because I'm a Constitutionist and I believe in the Constitution, I believe in you the people, and I believe in this country, it stands and will be adhered to until you the people decide to change it. <clears throat> now, what else is different about me? I hear Trump writing and raving about the immigration problem. It needs to be handled. And handled properly, <clears throat> we may assist people going home to their native land, but we will not be there forcing them. We will be there helping them, enable them to return to their homeland. That we will do. Why? Because they will want to go home. <clears throat> That's how you handle the immigration problem. Now, Trump says the 14th Amendment's illegal. Well, you know, if we take his thinking and go far enough back, how many of us parents came to this country, never registered, never went through someplace like Ellis Island, just showed up, put up a house, had some children? My God, that's illegal aliens <clears throat> by today's standards. Are we going to kick out half the people in this country because their parents may not have originally? But you see, if we take and remove the 14th Amendment, we can do that. You may say, oh, well, that's a little extreme. Listen to what he's saying. He is not talking about common every day. He's talking full extremes. <clears throat> now, yes, the immigration problem is there. Yes, it needs to be handled, but it must be done within the boundaries of the Constitution of the United States of America as it is written. <clears throat> now, you heard me say three promises, only three. One, to bring your voice to Washington, D.C. Two, 
to have Congress understand that they are the servants of the American people. Actually, you, the people, are the masters of our Congress. The House, <coughs> directly, and the Senate through your state. They are to follow what you want. One, via your state, that's the Senate, to the House, directly. Not what they want. Not what they think. They have to be. But you see the political party say you don't have to do that. You do the party line because we know better. <clears throat> no difference between the Soviet Union and the United States except for we have two parties. They only had one. Part, political parties are socialist ideas. No matter how you look at it, they are plain, simple socialist ideas. I mean, look at the 2012 presidential election. Mick Romney constantly complaining about Social Security. Yet, for 12 years, he hired an illegal alien, which he did not pay her Social Security on. No wonder there's no money. If nobody puts money in, then there is nothing. So he robbed from each and every American by not paying Social Security unemployment, Medicare, Medicaid, and all those other things. But he got a housekeeper at half price. Where'd the rest of the money go? In his pocket. And he was a presidential candidate who was belittling Social Security. <clears throat> These are the type of candidates you have. These are what are running through the political party, political machine. Like George Washington said, Political parties is a means for the unscrupulous to arise to the point of power which they do not belong for this nation. He said it in other words, but basically that's what he said. Why do you think I belong only to the Constitutionist Party? I made it up. It's not real. Because it's you, each and every one of you, and the Constitution. That's what the Constitutionist Party is. To be a Constitutionist, you must believe in the Constitution of the United States as it is written. Not the way you would like to be written. Not the parts you like and leave out the other parts. Not all that. We are to follow and adhere to our Constitution. Heck, I wonder if Donald Trump even knows where the promises made to you is in the Constitution. He's there belittling the 14th Amendment and he doesn't even know the promises that are made. There's six of them, six promises our Constitution makes to you, each and every one of you. And those promises are the only reason for the existence of this federal government. But there's a lot involved in keeping those promises. A lot. <clears throat> now I have told you time and time again, I am pledged to protect your rights, privileges, and promises made to you by our Constitution of the United States of America and the Declaration of Independence from the day you're born to the day you die. I mean it. Now my first promise to bring your voice to Washington DC. I don't even get any emails from you telling me what you want, what you need, what you feel is wrong. Well how in the world is your voice going to get from inside you to me? You gotta tell me. I'm all over the internet. Just tell me. I'll go. I mean, in 2008, I was getting three to four thousand emails a day. It was tough going through them all. A lot of them were repeats, repeats, repeats. But I'd at least read enough to know what you're talking about. And that's what I'm going to bring you, not me. I'm putting it inside me to bring you. Yes, I have ideas. I have ideals. Yeah, my idea is this. Our federal government needs to follow the Constitution of the United States as it is written. Not the way we would like it to be. I have ideals. Yes, we need a nation that is prosperous. That the economic growth is the main concern of our government. Not how to develop the economic growth in another country by letting our growth move over there. Sorry. You know? Now you want to discuss economy? I will discuss economy with the greatest economist you could find. And I guarantee you, he will be amazed at what I understand about economy, 
first world, second world, and third world nations. And believe me, the United States is heading to become a third world nation. Sooner or later, our money, which we don't have and we're spending, is going to run out. Just like me. I am credit card rich. Actual cash poor. Heck, everything I make goes to pay credit cards. And then leaves just a little bit to live on. I have credit cards, all kinds, and I got all kinds of money available through those credit cards that I could use, but that's credit card rich. And I'm heading towards that big building at the end of the road on those credit card rich people. It's called bankruptcy, if I don't get that under control. So people, what do you want for a president? I mean, don't give me qualifications because I'm far more qualified than most of them. I have experienced life in ways you wouldn't believe. I have learned things that you have probably would not have understanding. Today, the formula that they use for relativity, I was 16 years old when I said Einstein was wrong. This is the way it needs to be. It's irrelevant. Do I have the capabilities? That is the question. I am fully qualified. Do I have the capabilities? I am a strong leader. And you know, I am stubborn enough to do the right job, the right time, the first time. So people, what is it you want? for a president. Do you want me to go through each and every problem and tell you how we are going to fix it? I can't until I become president, but I will. Some of them, you'll fall to the floor. And the people who are causing the problems are going to be very upset that I'm the president. Other ones, there's no way I can fix them without you. I will be there to help you. I will be there to guide our economic growth, but I cannot do it alone. Let me give you one example. Ferguson. Tell me how anybody can convince an industrial manufacturer, a retail chain, or commerce in general to go to Ferguson to build and upgrade the inner city. Tell me how. When all they see is the destruction of a company that tried to do just that. And then on the anniversary, they had more problems. <laughs> the community must want, and then together we can try. And if the community tries as hard as I try, we will succeed. <clears throat> but without you, there's nothing. Without your help, I'm just one person in a country that has such vast potential, driven in the right direction, and allowed to grow, is beyond anything that has ever been. But as long as we let the political Carpetbaggers, that's what I'm going to call them all, all of them. Political carpetbaggers, a term used from the Civil War, into the Civil War, to take apart and tear apart this nation, each and every one of us, as well as our very Constitution, and you continue to allow it, there is nothing I can do. But when you say enough is enough, you political people, you political machines, you bullies, you whatever. No. We are going to build our nation as our forefathers did. We're going to pick our butts up and we're going to get to work together. All of us. Not one group, not another group. All of us. As one people.
people. And our guiding light, or whatever you want to call it, will be our Constitution of the United States. Our grievances are already listed. Each and every grievance that we all have is already written and listed. Our forefathers wrote it out. And it's there today. It is called the Declaration of Independence. Read it. See what it says about England and Parliament and how the government treats the people. All you got to do is change the United States and Congress and how they treat the people. You got it. It's there. We don't need a king. We don't need a dictator. We don't need a bully. No, we don't need any of those things. We don't need a political carpetbagger. There's plenty of them on the left. There's plenty of them on the right. I mean, I looked at the Tea Party list of people to choose to vote for. Wow! Looks just like the Republican list. And yet they want to call themselves different. They're nothing more than the Republican Party with a spelling defect. They can't spell Republican, so they call it Tea Party. It's easy to spell. T-E-A-P-A-R-T-Y. Instead of that big, expensive word, Republican. It's a little harder to spell. So, what am I talking about? What am I saying here? Donald Trump is speaking the absolute truth. I will not argue with him at all. But do not attack the Constitution. Don't say, oh, our problem is the 14th Amendment. It's illegal. No, our problem is somewhere else. The source of the problem, and he's part of that. Very source of the problem, maybe. Because he said maybe he had hired some illegal people aliens well then that makes him part of the source of the problem and that's where you got to go to fix the problem because once you fix the source the problem will eventually totally disappear and we'll be there to help those who need help to return to their homeland so people what am i saying promise one to bring your voice to washington dc that i will do Promise two, to have Congress start realizing they work for you. You don't work for them. They exist only for you by the Constitution of the United States. Without you, there is no function for them. Therefore, they will not exist. Dictatorships they do, but truth is they exist strictly for you. You, the people, are the masters of Congress. And promise three, Bring leadership to Washington, D.C. Two things that are more important than anything else in leadership. One, the act of responsibility. Whenever you do and make a decision, it's your decision you take on that responsibility. Even if you delegate that decision to somebody else, which you can do as a leader, but you can never, ever delegate the responsibility. That was one, but I said this too and know who your bosses are. The president is not the ultimate boss of this nation. He is the leader of the nation. The ultimate boss of this nation is the masters of this nation. If they would only get up and exercise it, and that's you, the people. You are the boss. They'll tell you that when they're running for election, but once they get voted in, they seem to forget that. They forget that they have to serve you. They forget everything. Because they got to deal with worldly problems first. Whoa, wait a minute. No, 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 no. The American people must always and shall always come first and foremost. Then we'll worry about the world problems. Will I deal with ISIS? I'm not even going to tell you how, but I guarantee you the world's going to be shocked. But I will deal with ISIS. Will I deal with other nations, rogue nations and stuff? I will deal to anyone who dares to attack the United States, but I will not deal with it softly. Will I put out our hand in friendship? Yes, I will. I will gladly put my hand out to any nation in the world, any nation, 
who wishes to be your friend and accept the world as it is. Because we will accept them as they are, no matter who they are. Will I be willing to defend? The shotgun in my other hand tells you, yes, I'm going to. You want to try to slap my face, you're going to be cut in half by that shotgun. The American people will always be respected throughout the world. Respected. We will not demand respect. They will give us respect because we will earn that respect. When an American goes throughout the world, they say, oh, that's an American there. They're good people. Not what they say now. So, people, yes, I am a presidential candidate. No, I haven't changed any. Yes, we can fix each and every problem. We can, not me. There's no way I myself can. I'm a true, hard believer of the Constitution, and the Constitution shall be respected and adhered to as it is written. Whether I like all of it or not, it doesn't matter. The Constitution is the Constitution. Fix problems, we need to look at the problems, see what's the source of the problems, and fix the problems. Above all else, through everything else, everything, your rights, privileges, and promises given to you by our Constitution from the day you're born to the day you die must be protected. And the first ten amendments of the Constitution, to me, I consider it the first ten is the Ten Commandments of the Constitution. Remember, the Constitution existed without the amendments. The first ten amendments is the condition to which the Constitution will apply. You change, you remove, do anything to those first ten amendments, the Constitution has to go away. You can't do it. It's not allowed. Because that is the agreement that our forefathers made to accept the Constitution of the United States of America that we see today as the supreme law of the man. First ten amendments cannot be touched because of that. That precedence was set the day they made that agreement. So people, you want someone who's a bully? Hey, we got Trump. He's ready to go. He'll take that bat and he'll doggone beat the heads over anybody who won't listen to him. He'll gladly do it. You want the regular political rhetoric? Hey, the Republicans got a full house. The Democrats got a full house. Or you left then with me. Nothing special, nothing great. Just someone who has a very large understanding of things. Who can get the job done, but only through you. And he knows it. We can fix any, any, any problem our country has. We can do it. But we can only do it together. I gave you an example with Ferguson. I use that because it's a good example. That community could be built up to be a prosperous inner city. But until the people are willing to do the job that's needed, the president can't do nothing. The governor can't do nothing. Even the city's council can't do nothing. It's you, the people. The whole thing rests in your hands. Right there. Don't want to be bothered? You're going to get something you're not going to like. Become active. I need you to start listening to me. I'm not going to tell you to vote for me. Listen to me. If you agree with me, then and only then help me. Let's make this country what it can be. Not what somebody would like to see. Not something else, but what it can be. A guiding light to the rest of the world. But we can only do it together. All of us. Each and every one of us. Together as one people. That's what I'm promising you. Your voice. You the people. Oh, wait a minute. Where is that we the people? 
I believe is also the promise of the Constitution at the very beginning, we the people, in order to form a more perfect union. Notice it doesn't say a perfect union, a more perfect union. And we can make it better and better, but we can only do it as we the people. But let the government have us fight among ourselves. They love it. Let the government have, I mean, look at all you. If all you united as one people and we all together voted on election day, first thing is our government couldn't handle that many votes. They wouldn't be set up for it. Secondly is we would astound the world. And that would be the very first step on a long journey, an arduous job of fixing our nation together. That's what I'm talking about. We together shall do what is needed. Only problem is you got to decide. And the problem there is you're not going to make that decision until May of next year. Then it's too late. I need your support now so that I can get on the ballot in every state. May, forget it, almost every state you can't get on. Sure, the Republican could choose their candidates in June and the Democrats in July and get them on the ballot, but for us, no, by January, states start closing the door. So I need you all to do something now. You can believe me or not. You can do what you want, but the truth is, we together can fix this nation. As president, I promise you three things, but I also say we can fix every single problem our nation has, but we must do it together, because I can't do it alone. Thank you for your time. This is J.D., yes, the presidential candidate for 2016. I wish I could say something more, but that is up to you. And I hope there's some things I say you disagree with, because you're not me. But let me know, so that I can bring that also to Washington, D.C. I'm not perfect. I'm not you. You're not me. I will not have everything inside me that's inside you. I will not have your feelings and you don't have mine. But if you give me your feelings, then I will have your feelings and mine. If you give me your disagreements, I will have your ideas and mine. See? And that way, I can bring you to Washington, D.C. That's just the starters. Imagine what we could do in four years and eight years before they shoot me. <laughs> Oh, there's things, things that happen. So people, this video is for you. You decide. You want a bully with a bat going around beating everything, hollering and yelling, and telling you that this and that is now he's attacking our Constitution, the very founding foundation of this nation. But I mean, he can tear it apart. He can destroy all of it. And once it falls, so follows the United States of America. Or do you want the standard rhetoric that you're getting from the Democrats or the standard rhetoric you're getting from the Republicans? And I know I'm not standard. Everything you hear from me is completely different. It is so interesting and so in touch with you that during 2008, somebody, a week and a half to two weeks after I did my videos, copied it and did it on TV. In my opinion, somebody stole all my thoughts. And you would all dumb enough to believe them. But they couldn't produce because they didn't know the one most important fact. It's you, the people, that's the real power. Thank you. This is JD, presidential candidate again, this time for 2016. And I promised you in 2008, if there was one supporter, I would run in 2012, and I did. There was enough people, one person, and I did, but I didn't do any real campaign. <clears throat> I also promised you that this is the last time. So you have to figure out, do you believe me? Do you want to give me a chance? Above all else, do you want to give you 
a chance to be heard, to be part of, and to help fix our nation. Because we can only do it together. Thank you again. This is J.D., Presidential Candidate for 2016.